So welcome to 2022 Emissions Inventory GACO and the CARES Updates Training. And um, my name is Jing Wang. We have our manager, Tammy, here. Also, we have uh, Maria, Emily here. And Zara probably is not here, but she's our part of the team. Uh, we are going to start it right away. So today we're going to talking about uh, regulatory information about emissions inventory and touch briefly what is uh, CARES for the new members. And also um, Emily uh, Maria is going to talking about GECO walkthrough and the CARES uh, EI updates and opting opt out walkthrough. And also she's going to talking about the QA process and the new opt out form for 2022 emissions inventory. And at the last, uh, Emily is going to talking about HEPs uh, guidance updates and also lesson learned from a 2021 emissions inventory, uh, some resource information, what's next. And at the end, we're going to uh, answer your questions. Then feel free to type in your questions in the chat and raise your hands at the end of our presentation. So now we're going to talking about why we're collecting emissions inventory, what's the uh, regulation, what's the applicability. So our emissions inventory is based on the federal uh, 40 CFR part 51, subpart A, rule air emissions reporting requirements uh, regulation, which is AERR rule. And also it is required by EPA air planning agreement. Um, Georgia rule requires us to collecting all participating facility uh, emissions inventory by June 30th of each year. And the state of Georgia will require, it's required to submit all those actual point source emissions data to EPA by end of the year. So what facility is supposed to be submit emissions inventory? So based on Georgia rule, as all part 70 major source is subject to emissions inventory, but there are a few exceptions. One is if your facility permitted, but not constructed, you are accepted and also or if you have a federal enforceable permit limits, such as you have a major HAP uh, limits, or you are limited and then become a synthetic minor source, you are exempted. And last scenario is if you from the entire 2022 calendar year, you are not operating, then you are exempted also. For 2022 emissions inventory year, it's annual cycle year, which means uh, the threshold is much higher than the triennial threshold. As you can see from this annual year, uh, potential to emit threshold table. SO2, your NOx, your CO threshold is 2,500 tons per year. For your VOC, PM10 primary, PM2.5 primary, Ammonia is 250 tons per year. So this is your threshold for, for PTE. For lead, it's also required on the triennial cycle year, uh, which is uh, 0 0.5 tons per year for your actual uh, lead emission. So all threshold is based on your potential to emit. You, if your facility meet or exceeding the threshold, you are subject to submit all pollutants, your CAPS pollutants in actual emissions through CARES uh, application. Next, we're going to talk about what is CARES. I think most of you probably already know. We just touched base briefly for the new members. So CARES is, uh, is combined air emissions reporting system. This is the EPA developed application which allows uh, industry from subscribed states, uh, local tribes to report our emissions. Georgia uh, used this since 2019 emissions inventory year. So most of them of you probably already familiar with it. So this helps us to meet uh, um, air emissions reporting requirements and also uh, helps us to meet the requirement of AER rule. 
And through this application, a facility can voluntarily report your hazardous air pollutants emission at a process level. And also that data could be used to pre-populate your toxics release inventory, which is TRR report. But your TRR data still need to be completed and certified in trying website. Uh, our Georgia EPD is to welcome continually, continuously encouraging our facilities to submit your HAPS emission if you do have a HAP uh, emitted in your facility. So in CARES, uh, there is two major roles and uh, prepare and the certifier. Those information has to be entered through our GACO website and Maria will talk about more um, about that. And as you know, prepare can determine your EI participation through CARES and also can prepare your report. Your one facility can have multiple prepare. Uh, uh, also a single prepare can be associated with more than one facilities, but your prepare cannot fulfill the role as the certifier, which means uh, your prepare cannot authorize to certify opt out of 2020 of your emissions inventory and also cannot either authorize to certify and submit your report on behalf of your facility. Another uh, important role is certifier. Your certifier can determine your EI participation status and also can help you to prepare your report. Your certifier can have authorized, can authorize to some certify your report and opt out for, of the EI for your facility. But one certify, your facility uh, have only one certifier for one facility. And a single certifier can have a link to more than one facilities. A uh, certifier can also be your prepare. You only need one uh, account. For all total toxic air emissions are made available for TriMe website once your facility certify your EI report in CARES. But uh, just keep in mind, your CARES uh, certifier is not the same as your uh, certify of the TriMe um, website. So if you do have toxic air data need to be certified only through TriMe website not to CARES. So this is a basically a brief in, introduction about what is CARES. Um, Maria is talking more about Gecko EI walkthrough. Thanks, Jane. I'm going to walk you through Gecko. This is what the website looks like. You'll go ahead and sign in or register depending on your status. Next slide. The Gecko homepage looks like this. If you don't have, if you've just uh, requested access, um, then you'll need to, it'll be blank. So you'll go ahead and um, click on that. Otherwise, your facilities show up here and you need to make sure that the emissions inventory box is checked for you so that you have access. Um, great. Um, so in order to, um, if you haven't uh, requested access to your facility or if you don't have access to the facility um, you'll click on that link and this is the web page that you'll see um, you'll enter your airs number or facility name and then click on emissions inventory um, and if any of the admin users are um, they don't work for your facility anymore um, or if you have if you have any questions for EPD check that box and um, just wait allow allow us um 24 hours to process that next slide so um once you have access to your facility the emissions inventory application should be highlighted blue and it'll show that you're enrolled for 2022 or whatever year um and it, again, it's due June 30th. I just want to bring your attention to the communications preferences. This is where you can access um, who, to see who is the main emission inventory contact. If you need to change that, go ahead and click on that. And um, 
If you are the admin for your facility, you can manage your user access here. Next slide. Um, and once you click on the emissions inventory, this is the web page or the site. Next slide, please. All right, so I know this is a little busy, but um, at the top, you'll notice uh, the historical emission inventory, inventory data tab. Um, data is available there up until 2018. Um, if you want to access any of your 2019 emission inventory, inventory data, um, you can see that at, in CARES. So the first several steps are to uh, update your facility information, um, verify your prepare and certify your information, and any other contact information. If there is any in, uh, mistake, Regarding your facility information, please email us. Next slide. Um, if so, once you click on that blue link from the previous uh, screen, it'll scroll down to uh, step one um, where you review the facility information. Uh, if there's any discrepancy, please email us. And this is a new feature because previously we um, allow you to update the information, but we'll take care of that for you. Next slide. And this is what the contact information slide looks like. Um, the image on the left shows what it looks like if there's no CARES users listed for your facility. So you'll go ahead and click on edit and you'll add your user. Again, if a single person serves both roles, um, you can click both. Next slide. And um, if you want to add additional preparers, that is most certainly allowed. And if you need to modify your current users, you'll, the, you'll notice the column in the right hand corner. Um, next slide. Okay. And then finally, if you need to verify any other contact information, specifically the main emission inventory contact, um, you can update that here in the communications preferences. For facilities that are opting out, um, if you qualify for that, um, you'll download your opt-out form here. Next slide. And this is um, the revised opt-out form. We've updated it since last year. Um, we're trying to make it more streamlined, though we are asking for a bit more um, information here, uh, but we're trying to like, um, help you with what information we will require. Um, again, light yellow cells are drop down lists. And um, to note, permanently and temporarily shut down facilities will not need to submit an opt out form, but they do need to go into CARES to, to indicate that, um, that they're opting out. Next slide. So um, for the opt-out justification, you'll go ahead and enter your PTE emissions in that column. Um, if you're opting out for the first time, you can use the PTE emissions from the permit that correspond to the emission inventory calendar year. Um, the sources that you can use include the permit, the permit narrative, or you can use your initial renewal Title V applications. Um, Note that you are using the PTE that corresponds to the, the current year or the, the emission inventory year. For example, um, if you have a permit change from um, 2020, like a permit change that is effective 2021, you'll be entering, there is a chance that your PTEs might have changed. So just keep, a, keep an eye on that. Um, if you've previously opted out and nothing's changed, this year we have um, emailed those opted out facilities, the numbers that you had submitted, um, and just review that and you can, you can indicate that the numbers are the same, um, but please make sure to include all your PTE emissions. If you do not emit any of like, for example, if you don't emit any PM, put zero. Um, we need to make sure that you are um, submitting something. And actually, there is a typo here 
if you do emit lead, uh, next slide. Um, so the PTE emissions justification column, you'll go ahead and select which applies, if it's a permit limit condition, or is it from the Title V application, or if that pollutant is not emitted. So lead is not a determining pollutant for an annual emission inventory year, so no response is required. Like, next slide. Um, all right, so the final uh, column is the facility response where you type in the permit condition and the Title V permit application number, and we've provided an example that if you if it's, for example, a permit condition, you will be including your permit number and the, the permit condition itself. And there will be a short video of how to fill this out um, soon on the website. And finally, um, for both opt-in and opt-out facilities, you'll be going um, to CDX to continue the process. And there's a green button on the application page in Gecko. So um, central CDX or Central Data Exchange is the platform that houses several EPA forms and CARES is listed or is included here. Uh, it opened on February 6th and um, the emails were sent out February 2nd. So if you think you should have received an email, please contact us. Next slide. I'm going to go over some additional uh, CARES features, new CARES features. Uh, we've clarified um, the language here on the opt out or opt in process. So and opt out the whole thing. Um, so if you answer no to the first question, you'll be directed to certify your report with no opt out form needed. Um, and then if you click yes um, to the the below all of the thresholds, you will be um, sent to the opt out form. Um, And then additionally, uh, NAICS codes are being updated for this year. This is part of the regular five-year updates of NAICS codes. If you have an update, an outdated NAICS, the, this is the, the code for your facility, um, the system will indicate this to you. Um, Georgia does not allow facilities to edit NAICS in Gecko. So if you have an outdated or incorrect NAICS, please reach out to us so we can make the correction for you. Now I'm going to walk through CARES. Um, for opting out facilities, um, there are two main opt out scenarios. You're operating but under thresholds. And the second is if you're temporarily or permanently shut down all of 2022. So if you operated at least just one day and you emitted um, any pollutants, then you will be you will fall under the first one. Um, oh, if you could go back, please. And so there is a note here that we've added that if the facility has never operated and is currently in construction, um, you don't need to submit an EI. So if you come to this, this point, um, you can stop and you can go ahead and delete your the facility from your facilities page. And um, once your facility starts uh, operating, then you can um, you can start this whole process again. Um, and um, at the bottom, you'll see a statement that explains your selection and next steps. So it kind of helps you make sure that you've you've done or you've answered the questions in the best way. Next slide. And this is the uh, this is what an opt out form or opt out page for in cares that this is what it should look like. Um, you'll attach the opt out form in the attached report document section. Um, you'll notice that there are no emissions reported, even though your facility has 
um, emissions is just not going to show up here um, for opting out. And then you must attach a PT analysis before you can certify your opt out status. Next slide. And for opting in, um, this is the this is what it would look like. Your, yes, your facility is operating during or some or all of 2021. Um, and or 2022 actually. Um, and is the facility below the thresholds? No, then that means you're you're submitting to this year. All right, now I'm going to cover internal QA checks just to give you an idea of what we're looking at. Or at least what are the most important things. So for opt out, we will be verifying um, your shutdown status. Again, you don't need to submit an opt out form and the and CARES will know that um, for opt out forms for that are operating and below um, the thresholds. We're going to be checking your PTEs um, to make sure we'll, we'll review what you've submitted, etc. And um, we will also be reviewing co-located facilities. So if um, your facility, if the combined PTE for the facilities exceeds annual thresholds, each facility must submit their own emission inventory. Um, we will be reviewing the control units that you've submitted. We're comparing it from the previous care and CARES entry and the current applicable permit. And we will also be checking the, when you run a quality check, you'll get you know, the red errors and the blue errors. Um, the blue errors are like the warnings actually, and we'll review them to indicate, or to make sure that there's no, um, it, there's no errors that we, or some possible errors. So we're gonna review that. And finally, um, oh, <laughs> co-located facilities mentioned twice. All right, um, but yeah, next slide. Um, and finally, for emissions data, we are specifically reviewing um, facilities that are greater or equal to 100 tons per year. Um, so we're going to be checking for correctness and reproducibility. Um, and um, um, if there has been an increase or decrease in facility wide pollutants, um, like that are greater than 20% year, 20% from the previous year, we'll be checking to see um, why um, that may have happened because it might be an indication of an error. We will also be checking facilities um, in the following counties um, that you see here. We'll be um, looking closely at the PM 2.5 emissions. And um, if lead is emitted, uh, it must still be reported annually, um, even though it is not um, a threshold. It is still it must be um, reported. And if you uh, choose to report HABs, um, we will be looking at increases or decreases of greater than 10 percent, and um, we'll be checking the reason for it such a difference. All right, and with that, Emily's going to take it over. All right, thank you, Maria. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go start by going over um, HAPS. So last year we had our first kind of official HAPS pilot program. Um, Georgia EPD is still in the process of um, recommending to the board that we adopt regulations requiring HAPS in the future, but currently it is still voluntary. Um, this year, our pilot program is currently recruiting and um, participation in the pilot this year will look a little bit different. Um, it will be each uh, meeting, there'll be a monthly meeting each month and um, we'll go over specific topics related to um, any future impl impl um, 
future guidance. So some, um, so we'll have like a meeting about thresholds and then a, um, applicability, what an opt-out process would look like, that sort of thing. Um, we'll be sending out an email um, at the beginning of March that'll detail all of the different meetings. And if you um, wish to attend one, um, and if you like, if you have ideas for one specific topic, but not necessarily others, you're not compelled to attend every meeting, just the ones that you feel like you have feedback on. Um, and on top of that, we are um, still continuing to encourage facilities to voluntarily report um, HAPS into CARES, um, but that's not something that you need to notify us of. It's just something you can go ahead and do as a part of your um, emissions inventory process this year. Um, as a reminder, uh, any HAPS that you import into CARES, um, once your report has been certified by um, your certifier, it does not have to be accepted by us. Um, that information is then available to import into the toxics release inventory. Um, so that kind of removes some duplication of work. Next slide. So um, reporting HAPS is just like CAPS and CARES. You just go to the process, add the pollutant, um, and fill out all the relevant information. Next slide. Um, one thing to note, though, is HAPS and CAPS are uh, kept separate in terms of data. So if you have any um, HAPS that are VOC or any that are considered a uh, particulate matter, you will also need to include those emissions in the VOC and particulate matter totals. So lessons we learned from the previous year's emissions inventory. Um, so we added some errors this year, um, specifically regarding fuel usage value. Um, there was some typos um, when it came to fuel usage where, you know, they, they had put in like um, several factors greater in terms of their fuel throughput as opposed to the fuel usage um, when those values should be the same. So we added an error if the Units are the same for both. They should be the same um, just to kind of uh, make sure that those uh, typos don't happen this year. Um, and uh, another error that's been added. Um, so if a processor unit is listed as operating, but it doesn't have any emissions reported, that will error um, to make sure that um, if it needs to be marked as temporarily or permanently shut down, that it's done, and if not, that the, the emissions are actually filled out. Um, and then there's also more errors related to the heat content. Um, information about that is found in the CARES user guide in Appendix C. Um, so we also, um, EPA has released the triennial data for the 2021 in February. Um, and so we've been able to kind of review that stuff. Um, so we've actually reached out to some facilities because of, um, you know, they're, they reported over the threshold for the um, triennial cycle, which means um, that they're most likely needing to opt in from the annual cycle unless their permit has changed. Um, and so we've reached out to some facilities to kind of check in as to why they aren't opting in an annual, but they are opting in um, triennially, which has a lower threshold. And then like Maria talked about before, um, lead is a trigger in the triennial cycle, um, but and but that doesn't mean that it's only reported triennially, it's also reported annually. All right, uh, next slide. Yep, and so we've also kind of learned a lot about how to input controls into CARES. Um, I believe last year they switched up how you connect controls to actual um, devices or units, and so um, this is actually done through the release point association on the process page. So you can access the process page through the drop down menu um, as seen, or you can also click on the unit and then click on the process in the unit menu. Um, and then you'll see on the bottom right, there's this release the portion, release points associated with process, um, and you can click edit. Thank you, Jing. Um, you can hit the, the edit button um, and that's where you'll add your control path um, to, to be associated with that. And then you'll be able to see in, on your control unit, control device and control path and um, unit pages, they'll all show that it's connected. 
um, to that control. But that's, it's, um, yeah. And also make sure that um, you control the paths, um, need to have at least one device and one pollutant in them, and they um, need to be associated with the release point or marked as shut down, um, or it uh, cares will error now. All right, next slide. All right, so resources and next steps. Um, so Gecko EI training PowerPoints and recordings are found um, at the following. Uh, Jing and Maria, do you wanna uh, put the links in the chat um, so people can access them easier? Um, but yeah, so um, th this recording, I believe will also be posted um, here once we get everything you know processed and edited properly um, and then the cares user guide is found at the following link you can also find it through the help page when you're in cares up at the top right you click help it's one of the links um, that's listed and then past epa webinars are found at the link listed um, so they do also do trainings um, get a lot more like detailed how to do certain cares um, actions. All right. Um, so EPA had some trainings earlier this year, um, a new user interface and a bulk uploading template and EI control path um, webinars. Those are found um, at the following link um, for new trainings. And like in previous years, we will have uh, virtual help sessions every Tuesday, Thursday, um, April through July. Um, if you need um, any help, we'll, we can send you the link um, to one of those. And you could also give us a specification of what you're um, wanting help with, and then we'll be able to kind of walk you through what you need to do. Um, so Georgia EPD will try to QA any data as soon as it's submitted. Um, at starting as soon as now, um, we're not just gonna start looking at it after the deadline. Um, but if um, any reports are sent back after the June 30th deadline, they will not be counted as late. They're, you know, you, you've got the initial deadline, but we want to make sure that everything is correct. Um, so if there are any sort of errors or, you know, warnings that we think, you know, could cause an issue, um, we'll reach back out and maybe um, and request that you fix that information. All right, so thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, you help us reach our goal of obtaining and maintaining an accurate emissions inventory for the state of Georgia. Thank you for your patience, all the work you do and cooperating with us to uh, achieve this common goal. If you have any questions, questions just reach out to us at emissions.inventory at dnr.ga.gov. Great. That's our um, training for today. And if you do have a questions, uh, feel free to type it in the chat. And uh, if you want to raise your hands, uh, we definitely, uh, you can just unmute yourself or let us know what your question is. So we, oh, okay. I see Michael Parker. Hey, um, I came in on this a little bit late. Is there going to be a uh, recording of this anywhere? Yes, we record the meeting today and then training will be posted in our uh, EPD website and then we'll probably send you an email, let you know where is uh, when it's going to be posted. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.